and this will just take you through a few of the other capabilities um, that we have within CSIRO and uh, across the broader kind of research ecosystem in, in Perth, I guess. So um, we've we've really kind of gone for it in terms of, of kit in in the uh, in mineral resources um, across the country. So this is the the bottom bit of Australia, in case you uh, it's not a reflectance spectrum. Um, and in Perth, we've got a major hub with the, the drill core lab that I spoke about earlier, um, and the, the FIBSEM, it's located at Curtin. We have automated mineralogy um, and a whole bunch of other things, including the Maya Mapper. The other, the other hub is, is located in Clayton in Melbourne, and this is where um, our big uh, microprobe lab, including soft x-rays, uh, which I'll, I'll touch on, and um, and our uh, XRD lab is, is located as well. The other kind of uh, thing that we, we, we link into as CSIRO is the, the Advanced Resource Characterization Facility, which is a, a concept that was put together between CSIRO, Curtin, UWA, um, and funded by the Science and Industry Endowment Fund um, to, to really provide that kind of multi-scale analysis uh, across um, across well, across scales um, but in Perth and we we identified uh, three gaps in terms of, of this the scales of, of a microanalysis that we had um, one of them was filled by the Maya mapper that I talked about earlier um, and the other what the other two were were the nano sims um, and the atom probe located at uh, CMCA um, and Curtin respectively but this um, this and, and the agreements that surround it really provide a kind of underpinning um, infrastructure um, that can be accessed and, and for the benefit of the resources industry. And it's nice and collaborative. Within, within Mineral Resources ourselves, um, all our characterization equipment sits within, within this characterization program. Um, and we have another kind of cross value chain program, the sensing and sorting program, um, which uses uh, techniques such as uh, magnetic resonance, resonance um, in the, the, the now commercialized next ore system um, to help kind of upgrade ores in the mine environment. And these two programs really underpin discovery, which is the kind of exploration um, stuff, which is of interest to, the, to this audience, um, right through to mining um, and, and the processing. And I, I guess one of the things that we're looking to do is actually to maximize the value from, uh, from the data that's collected at each of these stages. Um, because as was pointed out earlier, uh, core logging and, and those kinds of analysis and mineralogy are really the key to, to all, of these, all of these things. So if we can collect and use the data in, in an intelligent way, then we can actually um, maximize the value of, of what we're collecting even at a, even at a research uh, even at a, an early stage exploration um, stage um, so what we're looking to do is kind of go beyond um, exploration and and through through the drill core lab the idea of having multiple um, instruments is actually so we can look at what workflows are going to deliver um, the best bang for the buck so which which instruments are going to kind of solve the problems and and what can we collect now that will so, so um, that will save us heartache later on and that and that value can be kind of maximized um, by collecting data during exploration about deleterious elements about the 3d mineralogy and things like clay mineralogy for example that's going to influence um, some of the processing later on so I'll now just talk about a few of the other aspects that we can kind of throw into the mix to, to try and address some of these questions. Obviously, deleterious elements, a lot of these trace nasties we can, we can pick up with the Maya Mapper. 3D mineralogy, um, we heard nice um, talk about uh, CT scanning uh, earlier on this morning with the, with the Ore Explorer and how we can integrate that with with XRF, but um, we've we've been working on with micro CT scanning for a number of years now for uh, both understanding element deportment, mineral mineral deportment, um, and more latterly uh, for looking at processing. Um, so we have this this instrument here where we can scan down to 700 nanometers um, and produce these 3D 3D volumes 
that show us where the various minerals are. We have Belinda Goddell, who, who um, is really instrumental in this facility, has recently been working on some um, f kind of 4D characterization. So, and this has been in um, understanding how, uh, how ore processes. And so she basically scans them beforehand, leaches them, partially leaches the, the samples and then um, scans them afterwards. And with some data processing uh, image correlation techniques, um, she can look at uh, uh, how, these, how these rocks are behaving. And um, so this is um, how she's visualizing that data where we have, um, we can map out the, the changes due to the leaching um, in terms of the, uh, the uh, att attenuation within those uh, CT volumes and we can look at that in 3D. So you can really start uh, taking your, your ore from the data you have a, an exploration stage and kind of looking at how things relate in 3D then incorporating some of this um, to understand how, how that will behave further downstream. Another process, another way of, of simulating processes, this is Nathan Webster's work um, based in Melbourne, are in situ XRD experiments. So we can do X-ray diffraction while we're heating samples. And he's done a lot of work looking at um, iron ore uh, sintering. So this is taking all the, the fine dusty bits of iron ore, sticking them together so they can make nice uh, lumpy bits. And um, there are two phases, these FFCA1 and SFCA fa phases that form when you heat them commercially in the sinter bed. Um, and he wanted to understand what are the controls on, on those. And so he took two samples. Um, one had uh, kaolinite in it, um, which is, is more common in Australian iron ores. And, and one had uh, more gibbsite in it, and that's more common in some of the Indian iron ores, for example. Um, and this really speaks to knowing what your ore is kind of early on and how, it's, how it will behave later. And by gradually increasing the temperature, um, which is along the bottom of these graphs and up the side here, he can monitor the XRD spectrum and look at um, when and where these phases form. And so he found that the kaolinite ores produce more of the SFCA1 phase, which is actually preferential, uh, it's desirable for the for the, the sintering process. So that feeds back into what you might characterize um, when you're doing your exploration and, and you want to go after those kaolinite ores. The last example um, is the soft X-ray spectroscopy that I spoke about earlier. Um, and this is a technique we've been um, working with on some graphite samples. Um, and this, this uses very low energy X-ray. So you can see down here that, that we're now measuring the scale in hundreds of EV. So rather than the, the KV that we use, usually looking at for X-ray spectroscopy. And um, these, these spectra here show the, the spectra of, of uh, different graphite grains. And so um, the, the spectra in this very low energy range um, are actually not only reflective of the composition of the material that we're looking at, but they also tell us about the bond environment um, and, and, uh, and to an extent some of the polarization effects that you get in the graphite. Um, so we can start looking at things like the quality of the, quality of the graphite, how crystalline it is. Um, we also start accessing uh, lines for things like lithium down at this end of the and the much lighter elements um, and Colin is, is really kind of um, Colin McRae whose who's lab this is in, in Melbourne is really kind of pushing the envelope in terms of trying to understand the, the physics of these things so those are just a, a few of the examples of, of some of the other things that we've got going on um, and how they um, micro characterization and how they can fit into um, expanding the the knowledge that we get from from these rocks. Thanks.